start recording now. Sweet. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just before we get into it, um, can you please ensure your microphone's on mute? Um, and can everyone please turn off their video? Um, just helps with the lag going through the webinar. Cool. Yeah, so good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Tyrone Alkinson McDonald, Sport Development Lead at Harbour Sport. Uh, welcome to Harbour Sports Thinking Differently webinar today, Unleashing the Entrepreneurial Spirit at Your Club. Uh, we're incredibly lucky to have guest speaker Ian Sandbrook from Good Sports Consulting, who will be addressing you all today. Uh, after hearing Ian speak in previous webinars, uh, we had to get him along to one of ours. Uh, Ian brings real life experiences and achievable measures to the table, and we're super privileged to have him with us today. Uh, we understand that it's been a difficult period in, the, in all facets of life over the last six weeks, uh, and particularly the sporting sector. So the key to today's webinar is to provide you and your club with inspiration to go out there and do some great things for, for your members and your community moving forward. Uh, if you haven't done so already, can you um, please make sure your microphone's on mute, um, turn off your video. In terms of questions, we'll take questions through the chat function, uh, which we'll either read out when we get the chance or at the end. Uh, we're recording this for later use too, and we'll share with you afterwards. Uh, Emily will pop in the agenda into the chat bar, so if you just want to have a quick look through that. Uh, but without further ado, uh, over to you, Ian. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tyrone. Um, thanks to yourself and uh, Richard and Emily and the team at Sport Harbour for, for giving me the opportunity to come and talk to everyone this afternoon. Um, welcome to everyone. Um, thanks for joining in. Um, we'll probably be, you know, sort of... 40, 40 minutes or so that I'll, I'll chat to you this afternoon. Um, so thanks for giving up a bit of time. Um, I know there might be some people on the call that have maybe been on one or two of my other ones lately. So I apologize in advance if you have to listen to my, my, my terrible banter as I go along again. Um, but I hope that I make this a little bit interesting today for you. Um, I suppose today is very much about um, providing you with a practical tool um, and a, an approach, I suppose, to help help run your club. Um, no doubt you've been talking a lot about um, the immediate concerns for your club at the moment. Um, but why I'm really excited about this one today is this is very much about um, future facing and, and perhaps giving you um, something to use at your club as we start to come out of this to really start to grow some connection uh, in your community. Um, I hope to challenge your thinking a bit as well and your approach. Um, it'll be a slightly different angle um, than your traditional kind of club development, sports development um, type approach. I hope it is anyway. Um, so I also hope as you go along, if you have any questions, any burning uh, things on, on your mind, chuck it in that chat function and um, we'll try our best to answer them as we go along or at the end. I suppose without further ado, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring up my screen because I've got a little presentation to work through. Um, so everyone can follow along. It makes it a little bit easier. I hope you can all see that. Um, this, uh, this webinar has got a very uh, grand, grandiose title. Sorry, I can't even really explain what that means. Um, but unleashing the entrepreneurial spirit um, and essentially really around how we're going to see some opportunities and start to bring them to life. And I very much try and live in the real, real world when I'm dealing with clubs. What are the things that can help you motivate and inspire and and unlock the potential of the people in your club to, to go with some ideas and run with things. Because I think that's exciting for people. That's exciting part of club development for me. So I kind of try and focus in on that. So we're gonna, gonna explore that a little bit today. Um, you will get, um, I suppose, a, a practical tool or approach to apply this at your club. I've also got a little um, canvas, what I call a canvas sheet that I'll make available to Tyrone um, and available to you guys if you want it, which is a way of capturing, I suppose, the exercises that you'd go through um, in doing this process. It'll make a little bit more sense as we go along. If we go just to the first slide here, I just wanted to, I suppose, share a little, a little story um, to try to set the tone of what I'm about with entrepreneurial spirit in relation to clubs. Um, I had a little light bulb moment probably oh, probably seven or eight years ago now um, when I was working in the UK. I was 
head of participation at Cricket Scotland for a number of years. But, um, you know, a few months into my job um, there and trying to get my feet and understand what we did for clubs, etc. cetera, um, we had a club accreditation scheme. In some sports, and some of you will be aware of these and, and probably had some experience, um, which, you know, has a lot of good stuff in it. Um, you know, a lot of core things that clubs should be doing to, to operate well. Um, but I had a really interesting experience on one day when I went and met some clubs. Um, in the morning one day I went and met a club actually that was on our scheme and was accredited at essentially this or second to bottom rung of, of the accreditation scheme. Um, but they had folded, which was really interesting in itself. And then go along in the evening, that same evening, to one of our best clubs who are top of the rung, really super club. But what interested me most is I went along in the morning to that first club and I, I went through the stuff with them and I, and I said to the guy, I said to Scott, you know, you're approved on our scheme. How come you've folded? And he said to me, Ian, all this stuff is great and is all relevant and we get it, but it wasn't about the people. And I sort of went, like in my mind, it was sort of going off in my head a little bit going, well, that's true. There's a lot of process, a lot of policy stuff. X, Y, Z, but there wasn't anything around motivating people and getting people inspired about what they were doing for their club. He said, essentially, and I get given that to fill, fill out, tick the box. Um, to be honest, I'll make some stuff up. Um, there wasn't anything there about really engaging the whole club. I went, that's really interesting, Scott. And then I went to the next meeting um, in the evening with one of our great clubs um, that we worked with. And the guy brought in this big folder of all the stuff that um, we were asking them to do. You know, big, huge screeds of paperwork for volunteers again. Um, dumped it on my desk and, and said, oh, you know, Ian, here you go. Here's, here's all our stuff for the accreditation scheme. And he goes, and this is without a word of a lie, he said, this is all fine again, but we didn't get to where we were as a club because of the accreditation scheme. It was about the people. So it was the same message from two clubs at different ends of the spectrum. You know, and it seems really obvious to us now, but and perhaps I've been in that NSO world and RSO world, and sometimes we do stuff that we think's right, but we forget that club stuff is about the people. He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. So it was a really, really interesting experience for me and started to shape the way I started to think about how we involved and work with our clubs. A little less about telling and a little bit less about one size fits all and more about what are the things you can unlock amongst your people and your skill sets and what's relevant to where your club want to go. So that was such a light bulb moment for me and, and hence why I've de developed some of these workshops and the one that we're doing today um, around unleashing the entrepreneurial spirit. I just wanted to bring this to life again, just to set the scene before we get into, I suppose, the, the actual tool and the process. But here's a club that we worked with that went from this that was their clubhouse. This was a, a cricket club. Cricket club is my, my main background, um, even though I work across all sports. That was their lovely clubhouse that I called the Woodshed. Um, no running water, um, old moth-eaten um, sort of towels that, you know, gave you a bit of privacy in the clubhouse that you put across, um, you know, falling to pieces. They loved it. It was a real icon for those people at that club. Um, and that was their toilet down the bottom. That was three minute walk in the forest out in the back there. But they ended up over the course of the process of us working with them for four or five years to this. That was their new clubhouse. Um, and that bottom pictures their community day. Now, interesting thing about that, this club is in a town of a thousand people in the middle of nowhere, essentially. One team club, basically 12, 13, 14 blokes of sort of 30 to 60 years old, and it was probably slowly dying. And if it hadn't changed, it was probably gonna fold. And it's, I, I emphasize here that it's not always about a facility. This example here shows a facility um, focus. But what they essentially started to do and what we worked with them was around, what is it that you are gonna unlock for your club? What's the biggest, most meaningful thing you can start to do? And for them, when they talked about this, was they really came back to they wanted to become a community hub for their small community. And their small community had no facilities really. So for them, it was a no brainer about trying to make their cricket club the center of this little place. 
and I mentioned that photo down the bottom, that community open day, they had two and a half thousand people turn up to that in a town of a thousand. So for me, what they're doing is some wider stuff than just that sport. So a really, really great example. And, and essentially they had this focus about building the new clubhouse. But what they actually talked about was having as much fun as possible along the way. So they went through some of these things that I'm going to talk about today and just went, essentially, one event, one thing that's going to galvanise their people and bring them together at a time and make it fun and raise some money as you went. And I'm a massive believer in this old school mentality of coming back to being what clubs were really about, about that social connection and bringing people together. So they did things like a, well, they, we called a cricket force day, which is get your facility ready for the season. They got all local media involved, all their members. They did day of the region stuff, 24 hour fundraiser, climb the local mountain and play a game at the top of it. You know, do a clean up of the local beach and play some beach cricket. They did loads of events that they just picked off one at a time that got people excited and just had loads of fun along the way and got better at it as they went. And they raised all that money essentially to build that new new clubhouse along with a bit of grant funding. So I know that makes it sound really easy um, and there's a lot of hard work that goes into that. But what I'm kind of trying to get across here is it's about these baby steps, about taking the, the chance to have a go at one of these ideas that you can maybe un unlock through this process that I'm going to show you to start to really make some difference for your club. And by the way, that, that club now has three teams and a woman's team and about 30 odd juniors in a really small little town, which is, you know, they're pretty much at capacity for what they do. So I hope that kind of brings to life a little bit what I'm talking about. I suppose this is, this is just rhetorical, obviously, but you know, what does entrepreneurial in that club sports setting really mean to you? Is it thinking outside the box a bit, trying new things, um, making some money. Hey, profit's not a dirty word, guys. And I think we're all seeing that at the moment that times are going to be a little bit tough and we've got to make sure we survive. Is it about adding some value? Adding more value than just about the team that turns up on a Saturday and plays or the first players in the squash team or in the tennis team or whatever that might be. You know, and I put up some pictures here and kind of what I'm getting at around being a bit entrepreneurial, about what are the things you can start to open up. And I hope the little process I show you today, again, will give you some ideas and ways of starting to leverage what you do. And by leverage, I don't mean in a, in a cynical way. I mean, if we're going to go to the effort as a club to rally around some kind of event or program or something we're going to do that's a bit different, then what are the ways we can make the most of that in lots of ways as a club? that might actually open up doors in ways you never expected. So here was, I just wanted to note down what entrepreneurial kind of means to me, just to give you some, some ideas. Identifying a need. What is the need within your local community? And I tell you what, Harvest Sport, you know, those sort of organizations, RSTs, I'm sure your RSOs or NSOs as well, they'll have a, plethora of information around the needs within your community. Do a little bit of research or tap into them and ask them. Find out a little bit more about what is the need within your community. It's about solutions. And I don't mean to be blunt here, but I hear probably too much within the sports sector about what are the problems. Not enough solutions for me. So how can you think about what are the solutions out there that we can come up with as a club? Add value, I mentioned this before. What's the value add we can, we can do? I put in here around experiment. We're in the trial and error business, in my opinion. I don't think um, sports development, club, club lead initiatives that are mainly volunteers, we can't be as exact as the commercial world. It's just not the reality. There will be a bit of experiment. And look, some things will go wrong, and that's okay. That's okay. For me, it's about do you learn from it? Do you try and make it better? Was the idea actually really good, but we just didn't quite execute it well enough? So experimenting is going to be part of it. And linked to these, perseverance, <laughs> disappointment, and a bit of a roller coaster. 
I can tell you that club I showed you before, not everything they ran was a raging success. But they didn't throw in the towel and go off, oh, why do we bother? They went, oh, we didn't quite get that right, reviewed it, seen, looked at how they could make it better, moved on to the next thing. You're going to have a little bit of, you know, things that don't work as you go along. But ultimately for me, this whole workshop is about opportunity. It's about trying to identify opportunities and not problems. What are the things that are available to you in this, hopefully this post-COVID world that we're going to be heading into that you can maybe take advantage of? Hey, I love this quote. Everyone's seen it before. Um, and we always have a wee chuckle um, when we read that. But again, we do this loads. And sometimes that self-reflection that, hey, are we still just churning out the same offers, the same sort of thing year after year, and then wondering why a, our membership might be stagnant or dropping? What are we doing a little bit different? And related to that one, again, I see loads of this. It won't work here. We've never done it this way. It doesn't work in our sport as it slowly sinks away. So for me, it's about having that bravery to, to change up the things within your club or take advantage of one little change or one little opportunity you might do that actually might give you some success and let you build some momentum. Just again, to keep us thinking in this vein, um, how would these guys approach growing your club if I was to put some of these pictures up? And I might just give you, you know, reflect on that quickly in your head. If, if you don't know who these people are, that's, that's Richard Branson um, on the left, virgin, um, virgin guy. In the middle is Henry Ford, um, Ford motor car vehicles. And then obviously Walt Disney on the end, Disney. And I suppose I throw this out there just to kind of get you thinking. And if we were to think about it, what would these guys bring to the table if I was to, to fly them into your club committee now? What would they talk about? And Put aside whether you think um, they're successful or not, or probably some bad publicity around Branson at the moment, um, but just what are the skills that they would maybe bring? And if I look at someone like Branson, if I think about it, I go, he's about big ideas. Big ideas, big dreams, and then figure it out. How can I improve something that I don't like? When he started with Virgin Trains or with his airline, he didn't like the experience of those things, so he wanted to make them gold standard, much better experience. So again, whether you agree he's achieved that or not, he's about big dreams, about finding something that will rally him and going for it. He'd also talk about, um, and he's very open about this, about getting good people around you. He's really good at delegating. And he is pretty upfront around, um, he's, he's the PR dancey man out the front. He gets good people around to deliver what he's doing. And for me, the relevance around that to how we might do this at our club. Sometimes you get some really good ideas, people, but how can you break the tasks up? How can you get some good people and rally them around to, to make some of these opportunities come to life? He'd also talk about branding, I'm sure, and having some cons consistency around that um, and how we talk about and promote what we do. The next man in the middle around Henry Ford, he was obviously um, famous for bringing the car to the masses. He didn't invent the car. He wasn't an inventor, even though probably half of America would probably say that was the case. Um, he was an innovator. And if there's one little, um, I suppose one little tip here is don't be afraid of stealing ideas <laughs> in, the, in the best way possible. You don't have to reinvent the wheel you might have seen some kind of activity that a club down the road has done or you saw on social media that you think, hey, that is fantastic. Why don't we give that a crack? Or why don't we do that and put our own little spin on it? So don't be afraid of stealing other people's ideas and just trying to make it better or giving your spin on it. He'd also talk about breaking tasks down. Obviously, he was about mass production. Um, so again, how can we talk about getting more people involved in what we do. And I'm a huge believer in what I call bite-sized volunteering, micro-volunteering, whatever you want to call it. For me, unleashing some of these little ideas that are fun and exciting 
will help you draw in some more people that will then give you the ability to start to break down some tasks. He also has a really famous quote that I really like that I just thought I'd chuck in there, but he said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. And that one always makes me laugh a little bit. Um, and I think sometimes we can be like that where you only know what you know within the club or within your committee or your two or three key decision makers if you're just doing everything. And sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. So actually having this ability um, to use a process like this to start to involve more people might actually give you some new ideas and bring something new to the table that you've never thought of that might actually help your club. And the last man on the right around Disney, if you think Disney and we all, we all know it well, you know, their, their purpose is around making people happy. So great experiences. So again, what I hope we, we do here is how can we focus what we do maybe around some kind of great experience for people? If I was advising clubs now coming out of COVID, I'd be looking for something around that that would galvanise people and, you know, give someone a really fantastic um, experience of our club. The thing with uh, Disney as well, he was very focused on people's needs. And again, that's relevant for what you guys do. Um, when he kicked off, if you think Disney and Mickey Mouse, when it first came in, it came in during the depression in America. So that was about giving people a release of the drudgery of everyday life. But actually when it came to World War II, a little history lesson here, um, what Disney did was he did um, wartime propaganda propaganda for the government and then after World War II he started kicking in and, and, and developing his whole Disney concept but what I'm trying to get across here is he moved with the times and I think the message here again is how can we move with the times as a club things are changing the way people will engage will change so are you going to sit back and do the same old or are you going to be Disney and be a bit flexible and evolve He's also a great embracer of technology, obviously, and what he did. And again, that relevance to what we're doing now. And lastly, and we're going to explore this concept as part of the, the tool process I'm going to give you, is something they use, which is called create once, use many. So if you think of Disney again, they don't put out loads of films every year. They actually do relatively few. But what they do is they come up with a really good idea or film and then try and leverage it in as many ways as possible. So you think Frozen or Moana or any of those kids' films, as an example, you have the theme park, you've got the McDonald's Happy Meal, you've got all the merchandise, the TV spin-offs. They think in, in ways that they can leverage the whole picture. So we're going to look a little bit around how we can maybe do that at our level as a club, because I think that's, this sounds a bit cheesy, but organic club development fun and engaging club development of what you might do. And just quickly, what's evident with all three of those guys for me is opportunity and courage. So do they see an opportunity and they go for it? And I think as a little bit of an observation, and you, I'm not saying you like this, but do we get caught up in just the operational? I call it again, the wood for the trees. And I, I totally understand we've got to run the club and there's the operational stuff that's got to take priority. And there'll be those bits that you're going to have to chug away at. But I believe if you never look at some of the big picture, uh, motivational, inspiring stuff, then it just becomes stale and it becomes a burden. And how do we start to attract some new people that might help um, give our club a shot in the arm in terms of new people and ideas and volunteers? I tell you what, not many people want to come in on a committee, but run a really great event, maybe that's really engaging and new, that might draw some new people in that then might get the bug and maybe offer the help out a little bit more. So I hope that makes sense. And last bit, for me, this is also about relevance. And I'm not picking on young people with that picture, but if we want to remain relevant as a club or a sport in your area, you need to start thinking about these ways that you can connect with your community. All right. I've blabbed on enough there. I hope um, are there are any questions coming in or anything so far, Emily, or are we just keep rolling? I think we'll just keep rolling in the meantime. Um, you're doing a good job. Cool. Well, 
thanks for the pat on the back there. It's, it's good. I'll keep going. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to get into now is a little bit more detail about um, this process that I think you could run with your club. Um, I deliver these workshops, this particular workshop with NSOs and done in New Zealand, Aussie and in the UK, and obviously a bit easier with some face to face. Um, but there's no reason why you cannot do this like we are doing in this kind of forum, um, using breakout rooms um, or, or something similar to make it work. Um, but this, this activity is called Create Once, Use Many. So it's embracing that Disney approach that I talked about before. Um, and really, it's a five stage process that I'm going to just quickly kind of go through and talk you through. The first one's going to be start with dreaming. And this is all, hey, this isn't rocket science, by the way, either, guys. Um, it's all pretty systematic and logical. But what I would say is about each of these stages is being in the moment of each stage. And to explain that, what I mean is start with dreaming. If we're going to come up with some kind of idea, and I'll give you um, the context to this, you need to be just thinking in that dreaming, brainstorming mode, not thinking about why it won't work. And again, if I'm a little bit critical and I've been in those meetings, we often shoot down some really good ideas before they even get their air to breathe. At committee level, we just automatically go, oh, it'll be too much hard work. Or, oh no, we tried that before, tried that 10 years ago and it didn't work. When actually we delivered it really poorly and no wonder it didn't work. So what I try and encourage in this stage is don't shoot people down. Let's get some ideas out there. Don't think about why it won't work to start with, because if we're in that mindset, we will narrow, narrow our focus down to probably something we've already tried. So the first stage is start with dreaming. Second one, apply, with, apply some logic. And again, this is the beauty of this process is it's meant to give all those different personality types, maybe within your club and different strengths, the opportunity to shine a little bit, because you're going to have some big blue sky thinkers that are good at coming up with ideas. But you're going to have those people who love a bit of logic and a bit of planning who will jump on um, this stage of the process and maybe bring it to life for you. The next one, and this is really important, I'm, I'm, the be the critic stage is still important. So even though I said let's not try and shoot ideas down, the idea is that we shoot it down or we poke holes in it at the appropriate time to see if it'll really work. Because you don't, you know, we don't want anything to, to fail if we can but we just need to go at, at the right stages. So the opportunity for those, those negative ninnies to be the critic a little bit. The next one is around leveraging your idea. And I mentioned this earlier again with Disney and those examples of those movies. Um, for me, this is the beauty of this process because what I've done when I've done it and done it with clubs is it opens up doors and opportunities that they never would have thought of. So what are the ways? And I'll, I'll talk through a quick example of how that might look um, just to give you a feel for it. And the last thing is just what I call three things, um, which is essentially breaking it down like a Henry Ford um, talks about breaking it down into the, to the three things you're going to do first. Because for me, so often these projects die because it just becomes too overwhelming. And for me, if you just go, well, what's the first three things we're going to do? and let's tick them off and then move on to the next ones. How can you make it manageable in people's minds and particularly for volunteers? What I kind of encourage with this um, workshop as well, setting a, a scenario around what you're trying to do. And I think this is most, most pertinent and important at the moment. So if I was to do this at your club now, I'd be encouraging something like this. How can you grow your community connection? So can you come up with an idea an event, a program, something that will help position your club as what I say is more than just your sport. What would draw people in from your community that is more than just come and watch a game of rugby or, you know, coming down to our athletics open day meet or something? How can you create something that has maybe a slightly wider appeal that can give you some benefit? Obviously, you can set the scenario however you like. So if you did want it to be something more, more sports specific, that's absolutely fine. It is your club. 
but I suppose what I'm trying to do in this one is, is trying to hone in on that community connection side um, of club development. So now if we were to talk about each stage, so starting with dreaming, and I mentioned that before. So this is essentially, and again, the canvas um, that you can get access to, um, and I'll maybe bring it up at the end, or Tyrone can definitely flick it around for those that are interested, just gives you um, the place to jot all this stuff down and record it um, as you go along. So it's basically on a, on a sheet of paper for you to do, all mapped out. But essentially it's brainstorming. And I say here, don't be Garfield. And I've kind of alluded to this a bit earlier. Don't, don't just come up with the ideas you've done before. You know, dream about sleeping like Garfield dreams about sleeping. So try and be a little bit out there. And what could make you stand out? What could bring people in your community together from all parts of your community? And if you look at um, the region you guys are involved with in Harbour, and I saw some of the um, really great stats, um, particularly around the Asian community that um, I think it was Alvin put out the other day around the huge demographic of, of Asian population in your area. You know, what will bring some of those people together in your wider community? What would attract them? And this is really important. There's no silly ideas. So honestly, be a bit, bit brave and a bit out there. And they often say that, you know, the first 20 ideas aren't really being that innovative. You're just kind of reeling off things that maybe you've seen or done before. So maybe you actually just need to be a bit more out there and let the mind go and explode in different ideas. And that will only happen if you engage a number of people at your club. So what I hope this helps clubs do as well, and I, I did a webinar yesterday on engagement, is how do we get more people contributing to the ideas? So if you want some cool ideas, you're going to have to get 10, 20, 30 people from your club doing something like this. But I believe they'll be more interested in doing something like this than maybe the churn of, of some of the stuff that you have to do at a club that maybe they're not that interested in. So how can you make sure you, you unlock some of these beautiful ideas that people will have? And I was just thinking just then, you know, what, what could be some ideas before we go on to that next bit? You know, it could be things like, because um, I know you'll probably be trying to think of some ideas, you know, as a, a multi-sports day at your club with, with other partner clubs close to you as a, some kind of celebration of diversity or ethnic diversity within your area, you know, food and sport. Could it be a 24-hour fundraiser or an outdoor movie if you've got a facility? Um, a gaming comp for the, if you were targeting youth, maybe, you know, why, what's to stop you doing a, a gaming comp, you know, or a youth camp out at the club. Obviously a lot of these ideas in this climate, we've got to think about social distancing and things going forward, but let's just start to pull out what are some of those creative things that we could maybe do that would appeal to people. So that second stage will be around applying some logic. And this is really simple. This is your planning um, opportunity for those people, the bean counters and the ones who like lining everything up perfectly. Um, but the first one for me is really important is just filter. And, and I suppose the, the filter I put over this is as a club, select the idea that excites you the most. The real easy thing to fall into here is what's the easiest one to do? Or what's the one that you think might work the easiest? If that makes sense. How about we go for the one that's potentially the most exciting? That might really make some difference for us. And just a little tip here, a really good tool that I use on a lot of my workshops is <clears throat> online tool Mentimeter, which is a live voting system. So again, if you're doing this remotely, um, and I actually do it face-to-face -face workshops as well, as when maybe you narrow it down to your top five or six ideas is then you do a online vote, live voting through Mentimeter, um, which gives you a democratic way of, of picking the idea um, without it being influenced by the loud voices in the room. That can sometimes happen. So everyone gets their say. So pick that idea and then start doing some really high level planning. And again, on the canvas sheet, this is as simple as two boxes, really. What are the key actions and what would be the the high level resource you'd need to bring it to life. And all you're trying to do here is just put the bones together of what would be the key things so you can start to see whether it's realistic or not. Stage three, this is for our, like I said, the, 
the ones who like complaining about everything and saying everything like won't work, who are important in our clubs as well, but the chance to be the critic. Become the critic. Shoot some holes in the idea that you've come up with because that's important about testing it because sometimes the, the idea might just be a bit too far out there. So I do think that's important. And for me, that's around what are the risks or barriers or risks and barriers. But what I don't let people do as much as possible is just identify these risks and barriers and we just stop it there. And again, sometimes we do that. We don't think about how can we overcome them? Because in my experience, again, we can actually overcome, you know, the majority, 90 odd percent of them with a little bit of pre-planning and forethought. So on the, on the canvas again, identify your risk or barrier, but next to it, how are you gonna mitigate or overcome that barrier? And I suppose some examples of that might be, you know, like thinking out loud, really simply it might be, you know, actually people not turning up or, or coming along to the, to the event that you might run, um, not having enough volunteers. Um, it might be too big an idea. Um, I'll give you an example soon, but it might be that through this process, you find you, you scale down the idea a little bit, which isn't a bad thing. You might just go, well, we're just looking a bit too big there. So we'll do a smaller version of that. This process is really good for just working through um, that lens and getting that idea a bit more crunched down sometimes. Stage four of the five part process is around leveraging your idea. And this is the, I think the exciting bit that can, can start to come to life for you. And again, on the canvas is just a little area where you can start to create almost like a little mind map. So put your idea in the middle and then start to, to build out all the additional opportunities that your club could leverage from this one idea. And I suppose the, <clears throat> the best way that I thought I could um, explain this to you as, as an example. Um, I'm actually working with, um, it's a, it happens to be a cricket club field and cricket club down in the Manawatu. Um, and they're getting ready obviously for the, the season coming, been working with them for a while. Um, but what they've come up with using this process is what they've called a, a backyard backyard cricket fish and chip night. Um, big community event in, in fielding, which town of about 15,000 people. So they play at a um, public park, but they've got a clubhouse there. Um, it's a well-known place right by Manfield, by the um, car racing track there. All the community know where it is. Um, so they're trying to attract people down to their club in the lead up to the summer season with a big community event. And hopefully they're gonna drive some, some registrations and recruitment as their main idea behind it. But if I look at how they're gonna leverage that and what we've worked with them around, is if I just work through some, some of the ideas. Well, one, they're gonna be talking with council. So parking, facilities, but also when we start talking some of that shop with council is also how are they gonna promote? How can they help us promote that event through all their channels and networks? This is a community event that we hope that they're gonna be interested in. Local schools, how can we engage them? So getting the schools to enter some teams in the little backyard, little cricket games that are gonna go on at the park at the same time in the evening. So getting local schools to buy into the idea and the kids to enter teams to come along, help promote the, um, the, the evening as well. Local media, so they're talking to the local, local newspaper um, to come down and do a photo shoot, do a bit of a story, but also local radio. Will they come down and do a little hour slot hosted at this event, again, to give some publicity? What about local businesses? So maybe a naming rights sponsor for it. Maybe one of the things they're gonna do is around sourcing some sponsors, prizes from local businesses, um, because what they're gonna try um, is an idea um, that I came across in Canada around a, a, a silent auction for volunteering. One thing we're all hanging out for is more people who can volunteer. So the idea here is we're going to have some prizes that are going to be donated and people, instead of coming in and putting down a, a cash amount that they might want for that prize in the auction, um, they put, put forward volunteer hours. So for that, I don't know, cricket bat, um, I will offer 10 hours of volunteering. And I just thought that's a creative way of perhaps 
engaging some support from the local community. It might be someone that is really good um, in accounting or something can help with the books at the club and help advise the committee on a few things and give 10 hours back to them. It might be someone who will give 10 hours of coaching and come down and, and, and help out with the juniors and, and maybe go through a coaching badge. Who knows? So perhaps there's a volunteering angle. What about promotion of our various programs? So they'll have stalls set up for junior programs, for women's programs, where people can have a go on the evening and sign up. You have your sponsors tent down there. You say thank you to your sponsors and host them. You got your juniors and all your kit to help promote what you do. You got local high school students that you're going to offer to <clears throat> put through their intro coaching badge and they come, come down on the evening and help run the little games. We're going to have data capture. So you're going to have iPads going around collecting people's details. Thank them for coming along. If they want to get our newsletter, how can we build our networks around people knowing what we do? I'm blabbing on a bit, but I'm trying to make the point around how can you leverage this one focal point that brings your people together, this rallying point, this event, this thing you're going to put lots of effort into that can get you lots of benefit down the line. You might find that a sponsor has a great, great time and sees what a brilliant effort the club's making and will renew or a new sponsor might come on board. You might get some new females sign up for your female program that you're doing or juniors. There's loads of things that can come off this and doors that might open up. So that's the idea behind the leverage stage. And it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do everything on that day or immediately. What you might find is that might be stage two, or if you do a similar event again, you might add in some of these bits that make it better and improve that experience. And then lastly, very simply, um, the piece I mentioned earlier around the three things. So once you've got that idea, you've mapped out a lot of this thing, and then just going, well, actually, what are the three actions we need to do first to start to bring this to life? The action, who's going to do it, the resource needed, and what's the outcome we're hoping for? And just focusing in the immediate term on those three things, and then starting to map that down as you go along for the stage. So that's kind of the, I appreciate it's a real whistle stop through it and I'm, I'm talking, talking away and I hope you're kind of getting what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully when you see the canvas as well, if you're interested in getting something like that, you'll see how easy it is just to write the stuff in for you. Um, but a couple of the key messages, I suppose, what I'm trying to get across through this and, and, and how I hope it will help you um, is being deliberately opportunity focused. And I know that's going to be a little bit hard at the moment and, and I appreciate you're all going to have different situations and priorities at the moment for your club uh, and the pretty unique scenario we're all in. But when we start to come out of this, seeing those opportunities, what are the things that could maybe paint our club in a really good light and really start to engage people again, and particularly in our wider community? I use this simple Venn um, in loads of ways. But I think if you want to be relevant going forward, you need to be in what I call that sweet spot of club need and community need. It's as simple as that. If you are just about club need, I think you start to lose relevance. And also, if you're, if you're just purely at that community end, then you're forgetting a little bit about your sport and your core of what you're actually about. So can you try and find that happy medium, that sweet spot of being relevant? New ideas equals new people. So people often ask me, how can I get new volunteers? We can't get them, we've asked everyone. Well, I'll tell you what, start doing some new things that will engage a different demographic, different crowd, different sort of person. You might find you get some more people. If you're always going to the, back to the same well of people, it's no surprise that we're not getting more people. So let's look for some new ideas that will hopefully unlock the new people. Put in here, have the balls a bit, have that courage. Have the courage to give something a go. And if there's anything, and I've said this on a number of webinars that I've done, you know, we've got a bit of a free hit at the moment. People are a little bit um, more sympathetic to the situation. So I think you can give something a crack. And if it doesn't quite work, it's not the end of the world. Have the courage. Lastly, engage, uh, not lastly, sorry, this bit around engaging your people. 
For me, these are fun, interactive ways of getting people to start to contribute and be part of your club and using their brain power and their networks. Instead of just asking them over an email, will you come and volunteer for us? I'm pretty sure that's never worked. How can we use interesting ways to get people involved? Labored the point around leverage your idea. Really using that as a way of making your club development fun and interesting. And lastly, there around again, the three things, those baby steps. Just biting it off one little step at a time so you make sure you do get it done. So I've gone on long enough there. So I'll, I'll just uh, stop there and maybe hand back to Tyrone. Um, I'll stop the share and to Emily and we'll maybe just have any, any questions or comments or discussions maybe that we, we want to follow up with. So back yes. to you. Thanks for that, Ian. Um, we've just had a request. Could you please share your screen again and uh, bring up the three, three, uh, three things slide again, please? Um, sure. Just had a request. I think someone wants to jot some stuff down. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat. Uh, we've had a couple come through personally to Emily. Uh, and if you want to read out one of them, and uh, we'll go from there. Cool. So we've got one. Um, it says, in regard to the five-stage process, what are the barriers I will potentially face when implementing this process? And how do I manage those barriers? So maybe potentially highlighting a barrier that you've personally faced. Is this in the, I assume, is this meaning in the, the critic stage around barriers? Yeah. Do you think? <clears throat> yeah, look, it'll, it'll, it'll very much vary um, depending on what your idea that it, um, that it is that you come up with. Um, but quite often um, for most clubs, they're, they're big concerns because they often um, target in on some kind of event like the one that I talked about. Um, just their real concerns around will they get enough people along to make it worthwhile, um, which is a pretty obvious one. So for me, that just takes them through a good process around what are they doing around their marketing, promotion, engaging with different partners in the community to make sure it's well known enough. Are they thinking about pre-registration so they get indications of, of how many people are coming along, but like we do for these webinars, so we know if people are interested or not. So it just gets them thinking about that process. One of the other major barriers I often see as well is that concern around volunteers. That, that club that goes, oh, bloody hell, I, there's me and Barry and Jane and we do everything, but it's just going to be us. So again, getting them to almost break that ice and, and think about, well, if it's always just been us, what are we going to start to do now to, to broaden that? How can we make this a way of getting some more people? And I, I'm a bit biased, but I think this is the beauty of these kind of workshops that maybe you put out to your membership to draw a few more in into something a bit interesting that will then hopefully go, and I'll be surprised, I've not been at one yet, where you don't get some people start to put up their hand because it's something that they start to get a vested interest in because they've come up with the idea and helping you form it. So what are those interesting ways you can, can get volunteers engaged? Um, and obviously, when you go through that process as, as well, you start to break up the tasks and people realise that it's, you know, you're just doing this one little bit for our club in this event. You're not running the whole thing. So they're probably some of the most common kind of barriers that I hear and come across. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that was great. Um, so another one we have is, what have you done to engage young people in a committee or another environment that potentially may be dominated by older individuals? Yeah, look, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, I had that, a similar sort of question yesterday around engaging people in, in committees. I, I think the whole point of, of a task like this or a process like this one is it is not your typical kind of committee approach. So again, how I encourage these to be done is putting these out to your whole membership, even your whole, all your stakeholders, involve your sponsors, let them know that you're going to be running some kind of session like this, because you want to engage with the community more, you want to engage with them and get their ideas. And I think if you if you do that and offer something that's a little bit different, because they're probably not likely to have been offered this opportunity before, that you might get some more young people come along. 
and you might even explicitly ask for some, you know, young people will want you to come along or you might make the idea focused on the scenario being how can we engage more young people at the club. Giving them that voice and that opportunity to help craft the idea for me is going to give you a far better chance of getting them engaged. And But be realistic as well. You know, you don't put this out. And again, I never see this that you're going to get all of a sudden bloody 200 youth people coming knocking down your door to be part of it. But I tell you what, you might get five, six, seven, eight that maybe come along as a group or a couple of groups of friends that maybe do come along and then they can start to contribute and take ownership and become involved in it. So for me, that's that's the best ways I've seen of starting to engage those kids. This is something a little bit different than your boring kind of club committee type approach. I hope that makes sense again. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Ian. Cool. So we've got one more. Um, can you please tell us a bit about what your company does and what services you offer? Sure, sure. Um, Tyrone, do you want me to do that at the end or do you want me just to crack on with that? I can. Um, I, th I think that if there's no more other questions, I think there might be a good opportunity to, to lead, in, lead into the end now and then I'll okay. wrap up after that. Okay, cool. I actually just flipped through um, here. <clears throat> My company Sport for Good Consulting, it works. I work primarily with NSOs, um, RSOs, RSTs, but also directly with clubs that are interested around, I suppose, what I call innovative sports development support. So um, I deliver, help deliver workshops, um, strategic planning, uh, webinars like this to help, I suppose, move you into the modern times of, of club development and club sport. Um, so you can go to my website. I'll, I'll put some stuff up here um, that you're more than welcome um, to take advantage of. But my website's there, which you can go and find out some more information around, I suppose, the services um, that I offer um, and the things that I do and some of the clients and people that I've worked with. Um, I have my newsletter there, which comes out monthly, which, again, you can sign up to that on my website, which is, just should be on the, the main landing page. Um, but I also have a couple of free webinars coming up. Um, that might interest some clubs, particularly that bottom one, um, which is creating a great volunteer culture um, at your club. So again, you can find that on my website. There's a little button on the front page there around registering for that webinar, which a little bit similar to this, giving you a tool or a process to meaningfully engage some volunteers at your club and bring people together and get them actively engaged in creating the culture at your club, which again, I believe, as a way that we start to unlock new people and create that, I suppose, that emotional connection with people that will help them maybe step forward and volunteer for you. So I hope that helps you out. Please, um, please feel free to contact me as well. Um, my details will be on the website, um, email, etc. So I'm more than happy to, to have a chat with anyone. I hope I haven't overstepped my mark with myself promo there. Sorry, Tyrone. <laughs> no, it's all good, mate. You're, um, that was outstanding. Uh, I think that's it for today. So I just want to thank our viewers for tuning in today. Um, I think we had about 50 people engaged today. So to me, that's 50 people ready to inflict some po positive change into you know, their communities or their clubs. Um, I'd like to thank you, Ian, for your time today. A man nice. of wisdom, uh, plenty of good ideas with the group. Uh, some key te takeaways I had, you know, it's all about the people, uh, developing stronger social connections. I uh, must have the opportunity to, uh, sorry, we must have the courage, you know, to, to move with the times and, and pounce on any opportunity. So once again, thank you. Um, just from Harbour Sport, um, keep in touch. Tell us any issues that you have. Um, along with all the RSTs, we're meeting up uh, weekly, um, daily, um, sharing some good practice that we heard on the, at the grassroots level. Um, so if you want to get in touch with us, uh, you can go to our website at www.harboursport.nz for some more resources. You can email me personally at Tyrone E, so T-Y-R-O-N-E at harboursport.co.nz or info at harboursport.co.nz. Um, we're just going to post a post survey into the chat. Um, we'd, love, we'd love it if you guys could fill that out, give us a bit of feedback um, for future webinars and how this one went. Ian, is there anything else that you have or you'd like to mention to the group, mate? Um, 
maybe just a, a reminder if you do want that canvas sheet that I keep blabbing on about, I'm happy to share that. So Tyrone's got that. So maybe just maybe just contact can contact you, Tyrone, and maybe you can ping it to them if they want that. Yeah, cool. That sounds good. So once again, if, if you do need to get in touch with us and you don't have our contact, so it's Tyrone E at harbourSport.co.nz or info at harbourSport.co.nz. Cool, I think that's us. Hey, I appreciate it, uh, Ian. Uh, good luck with the rest of your webinars. I know I'll be tuning into them. Um, and it was hugely valu uh, valuable today. Right. So thanks, thanks everyone Ian. for tuning in. Um, you keep an eye out for us because we might be doing some more in the future. Cool. Cheers, guys. Thank you.